Good afternoon to you. It's the Joel Natale Show here, and we are live at our Kingdom Financial Group studios here at Fifth and State. And uh, we're uh, spending some time today uh, as part of Autism Awareness Month here this April. We're uh, glad to meet with James Tito DeWolf. He is uh, uh, a part of the the team at uh, the Barber National Institute, and we want to welcome you, James. So we're going to call you Tito from here on out, okay? That sounds good. That's what I'm <laughs> used to. So thanks for having me. I, I love the show, so I'm glad to be a part of it today. You got it. So, uh, Tito, uh, we're a family show. We like to get origin stories. Tell us how you came up. Did you grow up here in Erie, or did you transplant in? Uh, yeah, I grew up in Erie. Uh, went to Harbor Creek High School, so I've been here my whole life. Wow, yep. wow. And um, tell us how you got involved in, um, in, in, you know, being a caregiver or, you know, what you exactly do with aut aut autistic uh, children and young adults. Uh, it's just something I've always been drawn to. I, I feel like I always knew I was going to do that work at some point in my life. Um, I'm pretty busy with the music, too. But uh, even in the bands throughout the years, there would always be uh, people on the spectrum coming up and kind of playing air guitar with us and whatnot. So it was just, it was a very natural, I almost always knew I'd end up doing that. I'm very pleased to be doing it. I feel like it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, let's start with your music career. I'd love to hear this. Uh, and, you know, we have a, a friend, uh, Dan Sh Shell, uh, Chip Shell. He's got the Erie Music Podcast. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so much fun to hear how bands start and how people become musicians. Like, were you one of those typical 14 year old garage band type of kids or uh yeah for me it was i always loved music but i i'm one of the billion people that can say as soon as i heard the beatles uh that was it i literally i had, i went to my mom i think it was 14 or 15 said it's time to sell the saxophone i need a guitar oh it wow it. it was something with the beatles it just kind of clicked and said yeah i need to need to do that and I you were to probably songs. hearing it 20 30 years later right oh I mean, sure yeah okay. yeah <laughs> everyone all my friends are listening to raging Against the machine and i was the Beatles. <laughs> Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. I was once I well I I like those bands too, don't get me wrong. Sure, but, sure, sure. But yeah. uh the the some about the sixties and you know, early seventies music that I, I still just absolutely adore. That that is super interesting. So you got a guitar. You can do you well? Do you remember what you know? What kind of guitar you got at, at first? Uh, the first guitar I do. Uh, it was a Washburn guitar. It was a very cheap Washburn guitar in a fifteen fifteen watt crate amp. So I still nice. I've got it somewhere. I can't. I yeah. never part. It's probably worth fifty bucks, and I'll never <laughs> I'll never part with it. <laughs> That's awesome. And have you always been? into writing or i mean you know a lot of a lot of people are in cover bands or whatever you in erie and they you know it's great i mean you can really make a nice career on the weekends doing doing you know doing your genre of music but sounds like uh you like to write too yeah that's uh, really <laughs> the ironic thing is the only reason i ever picked up a guitar was to write songs that's what i was called to do like my guitar heroes were more the john lennon's and not less the eddie van halen's you know yeah, okay. was, i didn't want to tap on it i wanted to create with it um, but ironically, I ended up playing cover bands every weekend. Right, you know, right. I'm still playing, you know, which I have fun doing. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, but yeah, the reason I picked up a guitar wasn't uh, to go play Poison songs, but I ended up doing that. You know, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's certainly awesome. not that's not what made me gravitate right. to the guitar. Yeah, but yeah, I got there. That's amazing. <laughs> um, you know, talk talk about some of the bands. Let's see if some of the folks might know uh, or would love to go and go out to see you. So. Uh, you know what? What is what is kind of your lineage that way? Uh, well, I I was in Money Shot for years. Um, currently, I'm in a, a band uh, called TVM. It's an acoustic duo. It's uh, Tito and Vince Music. Mm. Just look for the we copped a very famous logo. It's kind of backwards. <laughs> I want to say, see if you can figure it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's awesome. So that's uh, Tito and Vince Music. We do acoustic covers. It's all popular music. Mm -hmm. We actually do a lot of the '60s, '70s stuff. I said, but also contemporary stuff. And then I also front a band called the I '90s. That's a, a '90s tribute act. Really, I love yeah. that. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of fun. That's the music that all my friends are listening to when sure. I was growing up. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's interesting you mentioned uh, acoustic acts. Um, that seems to be the thing these days. That mm -hmm. you know, a lot of a lot of acoustic duos are are getting out there and playing. Um, uh, it must be because that's what the venues can fit, right? Yeah, you can't really blast with you know six piece. You know, yeah. There's no Sherlock's, power band. Sherlock's there's anymore. no more Sherlock's. Is yeah. There? So there's yeah. a lot of venues. I I kind of welcome it. I I love doing the full band thing. Don't get me wrong. Like the, yeah. I, we have a blast in the i90s. But I, it's nice. Like if to do it every weekend, it's kind of nice to like scale it back and 
you know, and I love the set list. We can kind of play anything, you know, with just the two of us. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're not restricted to one genre or anything. So I, I really enjoy that. I kind of, I'm also older than I was. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, the, e the ears start ringing a little bit. <laughs> right. uh, talk about that, that first foray into, into personal care. How, how did that go for you? Did you basically say, hey, let me see what's going on at the Barber Center, or mm. did you work at another place? Talk about that. Uh, yeah, I just kind of reached out uh, there. I, I think I, my, How long ago was this? About six years ago. Okay. Um, and I just kind of said, you know, it's just work I've kind of always wanted to do. I feel passionate about it. And um, yeah, and then they just, they right out of the gate, actually, they found my primary client that I'm still with today. I work with several, um, Several kids, but I work with one five days a week. That's the one I wrote the album about about our experiences with. Um, so and are these are these adults uh, or are they uh, yeah. underage yet? Uh, adults, yeah. I okay. Think, uh, John, John, uh, he's twenty two, I think twenty two okay. or twenty three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we sp we basically spend every day together. That's my job is essentially I just spend the day with them, and he's you know that's why on the album I, I call him my best bud, and we just. Uh, Throughout the years, we've almost created this world is almost created itself in a way, just different characters. Like we always see two geese traveling, you know, and I always call them Jerry and Gary geese, just kind of make them laugh and say, oh, how, how did they how did they get up to the peninsula? You know, we were just at the mall. How'd they beat the car here? And, you know, you'd find it funny. And so when I had the thought or the muse hit me to write the album, you know, of course, there's a song called Jerry and Gary geese about two cantankerous, you know, geese, you know, who, <laughs> who are flying around just following John, John and I around all day. So. So and every song on the album's kind of like that. It's all specifically um, uh, derives from our specific uh, relationship. Yeah, ba basically, it sounds like you have this this narrative that goes through the day. Oh, uh, you know, kind of like uh, you've you've created a. Would you call it a fantasy world? What, what well, would you call it? Or, or, yeah, just, or just being super up. Uh, up observant of what's really going on in the real world right i think what it was is over the years just like trying to to make them laugh and to make it fun make going to the you know the y fun or going to the peninsula fun or That's more fun awesome. and you know that just happened and it was just like when i started when i got the idea to write the songs it was like it just started happening i was very very inspired to do it it happened very organically and it just went it just steamrolled like once i had jerry and gary geese it was like well I called him Pickin' Johnny Pickens, you know. I said, Pickens, not for noses, that's for a guitar, you know. <laughs> um, so I wrote a song about a country guitar picker named Pickin' Johnny Pickens, you know, who's, who's passionate about hygiene. <laughs> I, I want to play that one, okay? So let me see if I, can, if I can pull this off here, okay? This is Johnny Pickens, okay? Let's see if we can get this going here. Pickin' Johnny, pickin' Johnny Pickens, and Pickens all he knows. Knows, 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 Pickens all he knows. When Pickin' Johnny Pickens starts a pickin', he sure puts on a show. A show, show, show de oh show, a show de oh show do oh, show. There, there's Johnny Pickens. I don't know why he just went out on me, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting. I'm trying to. I'm trying to hear some of the themes of whether it's America or Eagles or there's a little bit of Lennon in that one too, right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the, it's all these influences, it's right? It's in I mean, my musical DNA. So like, yeah, <laughs> I love that. Paul McCartney's like in my soul somewhere. <laughs> It's inter <laughs> it's interesting to you know and so so tell me how John uh, you know when he when you initially I mean were you are you just one of these guys that's always singing all the time <laughs> well, I don't know if that's yeah I, I, maybe that is true I, I think like with, when the radio's on or something yeah. I'm always I, I think I'm always like being an entertainer I guess on the weekends uh, maybe that just translates over I feel like I want to make them laugh and want to sure. make it fun so yeah we're we're singing all the time and the thing is with these songs. He's he's verbal, but he's not verbal enough to explain something like this. So there's okay. this really unique situation where I'd written this entire album, and his parents knew nothing about it. And he was part of the process in the sense that, like, I'd write the song. Maybe I'd have a demo on my phone. I'd be so excited to, like, i got to pick up John. He's going to be so happy. He's going to be excited. 
and I'd play him the demo and he he knows every to this day he knows every word on the album he can if I start a lyric he can finish any lyric on the entire record right but he wasn't able to and even in real time as I was writing him he he was able to do that but he wasn't able to go home and say hey mom I'm excited about this record so I don't two years later finally it was like this surreal moment where we invited uh his parents over to say I got something to show you it was all done the <laughs> album I'm, I hope you like it because I already paid for the album art and everything you know <laughs> I put a lot of money into this, so I really hope you enjoy it. And like everybody was crying, and it was oh, just this, like wow. surreal. It was this very surreal situation. It was pretty awesome, though. It, it, it's it, it's interesting. I, I'm reading from the Barber National Institute's a magazine called Spirit, and uh, you know uh, uh, they say that uh, John's parents, you know, said you were the perfect fit for John, and uh, and uh, that you're saying that like that the pandemic. Did that se- separate you? Had to you had to do things on Zoom, or how did this all work, Tito? Uh, no, I was working with him. You were able to work with him. That's still. kind of what facilitated the whole thing, though. Was um, like I said, we're so active in the community. When the pandemic hit, it was kind of we were kind of at a loss as to what to do. He doesn't it's like kind of... to be cooped up. He oh, likes, okay. He's very active. Yeah. Um, so naturally, I thought, well, I'm a musician. Maybe I'll just grab the guitar, and that's kind of how it started. He likes to ask for things a lot, so. Uh, he'll repeat things he wants. And one day I was, he was, we couldn't go anywhere. So we were at my house and I had the guitar and he's just asking for olives, need some olives. I need some olives, need some olives. And so I just kind of blurted out, you know, there aren't any olives in this house, you know, just kind of sang it. (laughs) And then my wheels started turning like, well, maybe I could write an album of all autism therapy songs that would be useful. And then that then morphed into like a more artistic, uh, more personal kind of concept album about our, uh, about our life really yeah the the uh the name of the of the album is everyone needs a friend um it's so true i mean talk talk about your thinking behind the title yeah well well actually the title came from uh there's a song on the album called different isn't bad everyone needs a friend and i knew most of the songs are kind of like picking johnny pickens or jerry and gary geese they're kind of supposed to be fun and about these characters that have developed or whatever naturally but I knew I needed the like the album needed a I needed a message to tie it all together, mm-hmm. and that's really where track seven came into play. Where it's different isn't bad. Everyone needs a friend. So that's where the title of the album comes from. I really felt like that was the message, the message of inclusion, sort of reaching out to the kid that's not on the spectrum, or it doesn't have to be a kid. Just I think people are hardwired sometimes to be reticent to get to know people who seem different. Mm. And so the message of the album is. Don't be reticent. You know this is some so, of the best. So really, relationships. Uh, you know, f- folks that are that are in 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 the greater sphere, not just caregivers or whatever, or just or just uh, uh, you know, folks that are receiving treatment, they're going to benefit from this. I, I hope so. I, I I believe in the message of it uh, yeah. very strongly. That that's cool. We're going to go to our first break here. I want to see if I can use one of these as a bumper here. Uh, now, what is this different mix? Different isn't that would be different isn't oh, bad. Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is the song that the you're, one I was just talking. You're just talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that would be a good one. Different isn't bad. Sometimes Go to the, the best friends you'll ever. Have. Well, they call them different. They call them special, but they're just your friends. If everyone was the same, well, that would be pretty lame. There'd be nothing to do that you weren't used to. Yeah, it would really be a shame.
I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna stop uh, you two because I want to play the the rest of or a little bit more of different mix here. Different is uh, different isn't bad. Here we go. Let's see if it will come. Come on now. I don't know. It seems like it doesn't want to play during in the in the middle. The way I'm playing it is kind of goofy. But uh, anyway, we have Tito with us here. Uh, in- and uh, if uh, this is this is is really remarkable what what you've been able to do here in creating an entire album, uh, Tito DeWolf. Uh, Everyone needs a friend. Uh, it's uh, it's music therapy. It is inclusive, and uh, and it in how has Jonathan responded? I mean, like to the enormity of like now there's this thing that he could play a CD or you know pumping his iPod or whatever, you know? <laughs> uh, it's been awesome, actually. It's cause, Like I said, he's been there for the entire process. He's mm-hmm. one of the only people who really, for years, no one really knew, uh, my, my girlfriend and then him, it really were the only people on earth that n- knew about it. So um, I, it's been neat for him, I think, to see it kind of come to fruition. And I, we actually did a show where we played, or it was just me, I played some of the songs. Yeah. Uh, it was a couple weeks ago at uh, City Gallery. And he came out, and he actually has a line on the album at the end of it, where at the end of the album, I just kind of say, all right, John, we should say thanks to everybody. And he says, thank you. He always puts an S on the end of everything. <laughs> so, he, so you can actually hear him on there. Um, oh, that's awesome. And uh, on the last song, you can hear him on the fade. So he kind of ends the album. He says, see you tomorrow's, you know, because like, it's the day, the day's over. Right. Um, so at the end of the show, there were a bunch of people there. I brought him up there, and I said, do your line. And he did. He, he was a little nervous to do it, and then he said, "See you tomorrow." His place went nuts for him, and he oh, was just, wow. you know, ecstatic. And we, we've talked about it since. He's still so he's he's a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to weigh in because again, you felt this calling to serve other people uh, at, at you know as a as a caregiver, uh, as a as, I mean, literally, you're kind of living life every day with with Jonathan. Yeah. Um, but you know that. Barber Center probably has a lot of jobs available, mm-hmm. and we can extrapolate that across a, a ton of uh, human service agencies across our community and across the state. What what would it take to um, to have more folks look into what you looked into there, um, Chido? I, I think it takes a certain temperament uh, and certain patience. You, uh, definitely, yeah. if that's not an attribute you have, you wouldn't want to do it. But if, yeah, it's it's very very rewarding work. I would. Um, when you do do it, it's not always easy. It's not, I mean, it's, it can be difficult sometimes, but uh, it's very rewarding. And like I said, like even going into it, I knew I didn't want to be behind a desk. That wasn't for me. I wanted yeah. to be hands on working on with somebody making where I felt like I was making a difference in somebody's life, you know? Absolutely. And it, it, it's very rewarding. And I'm very lucky that the two things I've been passionate about in my life, which is this and music, I kind of get to do both. I do music on the weekends. I do this during the week. And then with this album, they kind of converged in this kind of beautiful way. So the, uh, you know, I mean, the idea that you were able to, I mean, just be so witty and so creative of saying, Hey, here's a mundane thing. Like, uh, you know, we like pizza, cheesy (laughs) pizza, right? Right. That (laughs) you're writing a song about it. Yeah. And well, it was a, Right out of the gate, I knew that cheesy pizza was going to be one. That's his favorite thing, and he likes to say it a lot. So I knew there had to be a song called Cheesy Pizza. It had to be upbeat, and it had to say cheesy pizza a lot. So the the chorus of it's just over cheesy pizza, cheesy pizza. You know, because that's something, and he that's that's probably his favorite song on the. Is it really? Probably, yeah. That's the one that gets the most smiles. I think. (laughs) Oh, that's fabulous! (laughs) That's fabulous. I'm going to play a little bit of that, but uh, before I do, I want to make sure that. you know that we really that we really cover you know kind of the the theme and the essence of the album and and really what you're trying to do with this uh um you know they the in in the article in the in the Barber Center uh, Barber National Institute's uh, magazine it it's quoting the everyone needs a friend you know uh the uh the, the that song that title song there that e- different isn't bad sometimes the best friends you ever have well, they call them different. They call them special, but they're just your friends. You, it, it's it's all about, hey, it's just people. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and that that's the message. That's the, the if somebody was going to take away a moral to this story here, that's it right there. 
It's just people. And so uh, having a little bit of more room in your heart, having a bit of kindness. And I think uh, to, to expound on that, I think uh, the good that it can do for you because you're missing out. The, you're really missing out on these. There's some of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you're also missing out on that experience too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm excited to meet you. I'm I'm glad to uh, to share these songs on the air here. <laughs> and it just it just uh, it's just phenomenal that uh, I mean you're just you're just a special guy to think that boy out of these <laughs> mundane you know everyday things that these really creative and might I say some cool chord exchanges <laughs> that, that I'm <laughs> hearing in these Thank songs. You. I mean, they're, they're interesting songs. I, I appreciate that. That was important to me too. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't I want mean, it to be, you know, no Barney or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> Three chords and you're out, right? <laughs> right I mean, right. all right, we're going to, we're going to head out with uh, cheesy pizza here. Uh, and, and we want to thank, uh, 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 James uh, Tito DeWolf uh, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You got it. All right, here. Let me see if I can get this to play here. This is cheesy piece. I want to. So just. Oh, let me. Uh, let me. Re- let me redo this again. I'm. I'm really doing this on the fly. Can I but... mention the website real fast? Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, if you, anybody wants to hear, um, you can hear all the songs uh, for free uh, at www.everyoneneedsafriendalbum.com. Uh, you can hear out the whole album. You can learn a lot uh, more about it up there. Uh, I also have CDs for sale. Ten uh, percent of the proceeds are going to go to Barber National Institute in John John's name of the Beautiful. CD sales. All right, let's see if it'll play. Here we go. This is a little tune about my favorite food in the whole wide world. It's been a long time favorite of many boys and many girls. When my tummy's is wrong, then I don't need no one to tease me. When it comes to my pizza, I just want it nice and cheesy.